Manna, the gift God gave to Moses to feed the Israelites with, as mentioned before, was bread from heaven, also known as manna, along with quail. The name manna is a transliteration of the Israelite response upon seeing the heavenly bread for the first time. Seeing the bread, they said, Exodus 16, 15, mon hu, in Hebrew, mon hu. And this literally means, what is it? According to Han, St. Paul implicitly associates the heavenly bread of manna with Christ, in this case, with Christ's heavenly Eucharistic presence. One indication that St. Paul implies this connection is that almost immediately after referring to the supernatural drink from the rock, which was Christ, St. Paul then refers to the celebration of the Eucharist, which is a participation in the body and blood of Christ, 1 Corinthians 10, 2-16. Jesus, Jesus explicitly links the Eucharist with manna, in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. John six forty eight through 51 since the liturgy, especially the celebration of the Eucharist, is a principal means through which the Holy Spirit inspires the Church to develop her theology, in accordance with the Latin phrase lex orande ex lex credende, the law of praying is the law of believing, it is important also to look to the liturgy when interpreting Scripture. The Eucharistic prayer, too, points out Petrie, refers to the Old Testament manna with the word do fall as a foreshadowing of the Holy Spirit's descent, since Exodus describes the manna forming after the dew had gone up. The specific place in which this connection is made is in the Epiclesis of the Eucharistic Prayer II, where the priest calls down the Holy Spirit with, Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Eucharist is the Catholic heavenly manna that sustains those who are nourished by it during their earthly pilgrimage. Reverent reception of the Eucharist greatly aids Catholics, too, in the words of Jesus, not to labor for food that perishes, but for food which endures to eternal life, John 6, 27. Interestingly, Hamilton observes, God commands the Israelites to only collect a day's portion of manna, and no more, six on the sixth day, since on the Sabbath, the seventh day, manna is not sent down. With this command, God taught the Israelites to trust in divine providence by living in the present moment and not excessively preparing for and worrying about the future. Reflecting this wisdom of Jesus, comments Hamilton, Jesus told his disciples, Do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on, is not our life more than food and the body more than clothing? Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, but seek first his kingdom. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Matthew 6, 25, 32-34